uh, thoracolumbar injury classification severity score or TLIX as we say it, uh, what this score does or this grading scale does is it looks at, um, it, it offers a essentially a guide for surgeons when you're looking at something, when you're looking at a, a patient's radiographic imaging, you're looking at their neurologic exam, it gives you an idea of what is the urgency of surgery or, or timing of surgery, okay? Does this patient need surgery or not? So there are three things that you look at, okay? Um, two of them can be obtained from the imaging itself, and one of them has to be obtained from the actual neurologic exam. So uh, what you look at here, and um, what you see in this slide is basically, you look at one, the integrity of the posterior ligamentous complex or the PLC, and that comprise, is comprised of ligamentum flavum, facet capsule, um, intraspinous ligament and supraspinous ligament. And what that means is that if these are disrupted or suspected to be disrupted, that confers a higher degree of instability to the spine than if you know that they're intact. So things that are like fracture dislocations or distraction type injuries uh, often have involvement of the PLC. And as a result, those are technically unstable injuries. Um, other things that they look at are the morphology of uh, potentially compression fractures like burst or partial burst fractures. And last but not least, we look at uh, the patient's neurologic exam, whether they are neurologically intact, have an incomplete spinal cord injury, complete spinal cord injury, or things like cauda These are all taken into account into the severity scale. And basically what it does is it says, you know, it's on a scale of, I forget the actual numbers itself, but um, higher numbers, uh, more points mean that this patient needs, will likely need surgical intervention and lower points mean that this patient um, will can, you can potentially uh, wait and see or try conservative management. Um, another variant of the uh, TLEX, there are many different, let me put it this way, there are many different grading scales for uh, thoracolumbar injuries. And one of them is the AO spine criteria. And there are, we have more slides on this and we'll look at it as well too. So there's TLEX, which is more clinically oriented. And you have AO spine, which is more morphology oriented. Um, although there are more papers coming out to uh, suggest that certain morphology, trying to confer a clinical significance to the morphologies of the injuries. But this is what we use to kind of, um, to describe the injuries a little bit better. So you can have, broadly speaking, three different types of uh, uh, thoracolumbar type fractures on the AO spine criteria. You have type A, which are compression injuries, they're only the anterior column, um, very, and do, generally do not involve uh, a significant portion of the middle of column and do not involve the posterior column at all. They have type B, which are distraction injuries, which by definition um, have to involve the posterior column or disruption of the posterior tension band. And type C, which are the uh, fracture dislocation type injuries, which are all, these, these are the worst of the worst. These, these type of injuries are always unstable and always need um, surgical intervention. So <clears throat> what this does is, as you can imagine, there are no, 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 two traumas are similar. Everyone's trauma is unique in some way, but what we try to do is we try to reduce some of the heterogeneity of um, the, the radiographic imaging of traumas. And we try to introduce homogeneity in the way we describe them, the way we do research on them and the way that we, um, and the way that we treat them. So, <clears throat> so, you know, it's, it's good to, and it's a good exercise. And I always would try to do this when I was describing um, let's say burst fractures or vertebral body uh, uh, compression type fractures uh, to my attendings, I would tell them it's an AO spine uh, type A3, for example, or uh, an AO spine type, you know, B2 or something like that. And they would generally appreciate that because they knew exactly what I was talking about. And it shows that I, I took the time and the effort to look at the images and um, get an idea of what, uh, you know, what we were dealing with. So um, going back here, um, so we have uh, type A, uh, can I say yeah, something sure. real quick? Can you go back for a second? Yeah. Because our friend Carlton Watson asked a great question, and I just want to address it real quick because I tried to type it, but I can't listen and type at the same time. So I want to say it real quick. So he asked if, if you only do this at the initial injury or if you do it later to see if it's changed. And just a fundamental concept about this and the way we go through them and the way that the AO spine mm -hmm. tells you to go through this um, classification when you're looking at the spine, when they come in the ear after initial injury, you see the worst one first. Is it a translation? Is it already frankly unstable? Is there motion of one body on another such that there is cord injury can all compromise? Mm -hmm. If not, then you move down to B. Is there a distraction? Is there both? Is there posterior tension band or anterior tension band injury? 
a lot of times C by definition, actually a lot of times, all the time, C by definition will have component of B. C has to have B. It has to have either anterior or posterior tension band injury in order to move like that. C will also likely have a component of A. It'll probably have some kind of a compression. Now, if you rule out C and you go to B, if you have anterior posterior tension band injury, you obviously don't have a C and it's not going to move to a C likely unless you throw them off the table or something. They fall off the table. I don't know, whatever, but it might have an A. And if you're starting with an A, if it's only anterior column, if it's only involving the vertebral body itself, no tension bands, then it's not going to move to a B or a C again, unless they fall off the table or something bad happens to them. So really only, you only need to do this at the initial scan. You don't need to do this again. It's a classification to see where they go immediately, where you're triaging this person in terms of management. You agree with that, Rizzoli? Is that a good answer? Yeah. So you want to, uh, you want to, um, so, so for the T-Lex and AO spine, you want to do it at the time of uh, when they arrive. The, the difference is, I think what you're referring to, Carlton, is the Asia scale. And uh, although we do do the Asia scale at the time of the injury, it's not technically correct. It, we generally should, the, the most accurate Asia uh, scale in terms of grading the severity of spinal cord injury is somewhere between 48 and 72 hours after the injury. So that's how we get a better idea of what the patient's true Asia scale is. Now, this is more uh, a, 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 this, a clinical decision rules on whether or not you should, you can potentially conservatively manage this patient who comes in with like, say a type A2 type fracture uh, versus somebody who needs to go to the OR right away. So that's how that's, you, you want to do AO spine and Telex at the time of um, the scan. So this is why it's good that we're doing this together. Cause I just learned something there too. Cause when we're doing this, when this person comes in the ER, I'm reading that CT and I'm giving you one of those injuries. You're looking at it too, but Supposedly, I'm the one that's the expert on the CT, but I don't know anything about the age. I don't know anything about the patient. So there's right. more to it. So that's why it's good that we're, we're working these patients up all together as a team. Yeah, exactly. Totally agree. So um, going on to the different types of AO, this is now we're talking about AO spine criteria. Again, AO spine talks more about the morphology of the injury. That, that's the, the main uh, goal of the AO spine criteria um, with a secondary goal of guiding clinical decision making. Okay, it's not as well defined as Telex. Telex's goal is to decide whether or not this patient needs surgery, or you can, or something indeterminate, or whether you can maybe conservatively manage it. Okay, so Telex for clinical, AO spine for morphology. So you can see here, it goes from a there's an A zero, which is basically insignificant type fractures, and then it goes from A one to A four, and it's generally confers the severity of the type of injury. However, these A2 type fractures, which is interesting is these A2 type fractures are, <coughs> are um, highly unlikely to heal well, unlike oblique type fractures. These often need some sort of surgical intervention versus A3, which um, potentially based on uh, the patient's neurologic exam, their age, their, their degree of um, the, you know, the bone quality, their health, you could potentially conservatively manage these. And then these A4s uh, tend to also need to be um, surgically managed. So it sees a little, there's a little bit of, it's not it's as straightforward as you would think. Um, oftentimes, uh, the best way to know whether or not a patient will need surgical intervention is getting, if they can tolerate it, a weight bearing x ray. And that's where the utility comes in. Because you can see, um, you know, you're not, when you're, someone's getting a CT or an, or an MRI, they're laying supine on a table and they're not in their, true physiologic alignment when they're standing up. I mean, things can drastically change when someone's standing up. So the utility of x-ray is not for a patient to lay supine. The utility of the x-ray in this setting is to have them stand up and take a look. And I will say this again, if you have a patient admitted to your service with trauma and some sort of fracture to the spine, they cannot leave your service unless they have an upright or a weight-bearing x-ray, okay? It's the most important scan they're gonna get, more important than the CT or MRI. Is, uh, is, is the uh, a weight-bearing scan. So make sure every trauma patient has an upright or standing AP and lateral lumbar, or if they have a cervical injury, cervical x-ray before they get discharged, okay? Super important. And if they have a collar, make sure they're in a collar when they get that x-ray, because then you know how that patient's likely gonna heal if you decided to treat this patient conservatively. And in the case of a lumbar fracture, you want them to be in, a, let's say, an LSO or a TLSO. All right. So, um, okay, I, I don't really Can I get into that. Go back for a second. Sure. Because I know there are people, they're not just neurosurgery people here, there are radiology people here too. So 
just real quick about the way I tell people to look at this when we're looking at the fracture. So if we know it's anterior column only, these A-types, what I tell people to do, again, you're going from worst to least bad. You want to rule out the very worst thing first. So we would start with A4. So see if they have an A4. You look at the posterior cortex. Is the posterior cortex involved? If it is, you know it's three or four. So that's a burst, a complete burst or an incomplete burst. The next thing you look at is the end plates. So if it's just one end plate, that's incomplete. So that's A3, point A3. Thank you. If it's both end plates, it's A4, which is a complete burst. Now that split fracture, that, I'm glad you said that, Rosalie, because I didn't know, I thought those were more severe, but I didn't know the significance of the healing. So that's interesting. Um, but despite that, the posterior cortex is intact. There's no chance of retropulsion of fragments into the canal. And then A, like you said, it's just a one end plate. We see those all the time. Um, probably not very significant and the least bad, but always go from the worst to the least. So look at that posterior cortex first. All right, now go ahead. Yeah. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.